Um, <laughs> uh, inside the chest, however, you do see uh, a small collection of gems. There's All right. three rubies, a sapphire, and a small diamond. You, you grab them and you hold them, and you feel a tingling sensation with them in your hand. Um, put them in the pouch. As soon as you're not touching them anymore, that sensation goes away. You put the pouch on your side. Feral size. This is magic again. All right, and then I look at the sword and uh, I go to try to take it. Okay. Uh, you put your hand where on the sword? On the hilt. <laughs> I grab the blade. I, I, grab the blade. Always, I always grab the blade. I always get the, the power blade. To the so you guys finish up uh, investigating around the tower, and uh, you decide to step back out towards the ruins. It is still uh, early in the day. Um, we've got a bit of a trek ahead of you. <clears throat> so, with that being said, everyone, make a wisdom saving throw. As you, in searching the tower and looking around uh, Taller's locale, you spent a little bit extra time. And even though the presence of shadow that you sensed, uh, both Cyril and Nebuchadnezzar, has started to fade away, it is still present as the taint upon the land um, is still very strong in this area. And you still feel the oppressive nature of shadow here. Um, and this tower has been a focal point for it for so long. And so, uh, with the time that you've spent here, you do need to make another corruption save. So, uh, Cyril. I got an eight. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar? Uh, a non nat 20. Okay. Haley? Can I use my inspiration die? Yeah. Okay. Can you use inspiration so, die on saving throws? I'm no, this is from it. you. Oh, yes. Yes. The okay. DM inspiration? Yeah. You can. Yeah. All right. Um, 13. Okay. Add your help. Uh, 20, unnatural 20. Okay, Dala. 19. 19. Uh, Cyril, you take one point of shadow as you feel yourself just barely shrugging away the oppressive nature of the tower and of the combat you just had with Taller. Feeling that slight tingle as you held those gems in your hand, knowing that they're more than just rubies and sapphires. And feeling that sword just felt right. And for a moment, you have a, a vision of command. That there's command in your future. And you're drawn towards it, but you shake it off and continue on with your trek towards the ruins. So. Yeah. Oh, can I guess something real quick? So in terms of our layout of our party, uh, I think we should put one of the dwarves in the front, one of the dwarves in the back, um, one one front guard, one rear guard. I'm sure that Edra Hill will probably still be scouting ahead a little bit, but uh, I'm also going to be near the front as well of the at least the main party. So wherever Dala and Hill wants to be or whatever, I just I want to kind of know where we're at positionally, just in case we get flanked or whatever. So I'm gonna so imagine if we're made it almost like like a like this type of shape in a sense, like uh, one dwarf here, one dwarf here, me kind of like around here, be able to watch this side and wherever else anyone else to go. Alrighty, works for me. Does anyone have anywhere in particular they want to be? In the oh, middle. Front or back? Middle. Uh, I can tell you would probably be closer to the front being the scout. Uh, Sarah, what? Uh, I think uh, Sarah and Will will be upon our horses um, and um, I think before uh, we were... In the heart of the Mirkwood, you won't be able to be on your horse yet. That's right. Okay. So then we'll just be walking alongside the horses. Um, I think we would be closer to the front as well, um, just so we can continue to look out. Um, so wherever that shakes out, that's fine. And right. and I think that Gabe should be a bit ahead of the party, at least by like 50 feet or so, or 100 feet. Yeah, we just talked about that. Yeah. Okay. A minute before we start walking, I'm going to walk up to Edgerhel. 
and say, um, I can't reach, but I made this flower crown for Alagos. I think she's really pretty in it. <laughs> I grab it and I say, thank you very much. I believe that she will like it a lot. And then I turn over her because I believe that either, well, is she actually going? Is she going with uh, the rest of the horses or will she go in with me? That's up to you. Hmm. Although I would prefer her to be with me. I believe that it would be better for her to be with the bulk of the group. All right, make an animal handling check with advantage. All right. Uh, that would be a 17. 17. It takes a little convincing. You can tell that um, she is hesitant to leave your side as she was uh, given to you to, to help watch after you. Um, but you are able to uh, soothe that worry and have her stay with the rest of the horses uh, in the main group. All right. So having said that, uh, since have we started or have when we started yet? You're about to, to set off. All right. Yep. Then I, I come, what I want to do is uh, tell Haley, hey, Haley, uh, let's go and let's give it to her together. Because I also want her to grow fond of you. Just okay. anything. So we come together and we go to Alagos and then we show her the crown and like hopefully she won't eat it. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, Edrahel, go ahead and make just a straight animal handling check as you present the crown towards her. Do I need to as well? Not yet. Three. Three. She gives it a bit of a sniff. <laughs> What'd you make it out of, Haley? Wildflowers. Wildflowers. Um, Is she gonna eat it? <laughs> she very delicately. <laughs> and and spits the, the flower out. And then she looks down at you. Go ahead and make an animal handling check. Well. Well. Uh, she looks at you curiously for a moment. And you actually have a similar picture flash into your mind of storm clouds overhead and a gust of wind ripping through a field of grass that hasn't been cut in a long time. Just gone to seed, it's at least two or three feet tall and you just see wind ripping through the grass. Um, a moment passes and uh, Alagos uh, bends down her front two legs and, and puts her head down so that if you would like Haley, you can Put oh, so I can reach? <laughs> okay. I will put it um, just between her ears. Okay. Yeah. She, uh, she gets back up and she just looks at you and goes... And then it falls not, not very <laughs> delicate. <so>. Just, <laughs> just knock down. <laughs> and the hobbit goes flying. <laughs> and you take three points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> no, just a, a bit of a nod. Um, not a very delicate one, but a bit of a nod. Okay. Of course. <laughs> well, while that's happening, Cyril rocks up uh, and he's uh, smiling, which is uncharacteristic for him. Uh, uh, he waits till everything is done and he uh, nods at Algos. And then uh, he briefly describes to both Haley and Edrahel about the sword and the um, sapphire he found. Uh, he's asking Edrahel because it's a Velvin make and Haley might know stories. So briefly he asks if they know anything else about those things. All right. So what kind of check would I have to make to <laughs> see if I actually know anything about it? Um, sword. This one. <laughs> a sword check. Roll a sword check. Roll an attack <laughs> roll against Cyrell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call this a lore? <laughs> lore? Yeah. All right. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, I was saying that uh, given that the sword is related to, like, Bofur's travels, um, would it be something that could potentially be in Bilbo's story that I would know? Yeah. I mean, you can make a lore check as well. Unless you have a good reason to make a different ability check. Uh, 
17. Okay. 16. All right. Uh, looking it over, um, hearing Cyrell's description of the, the blade and the gems, do you hand either of them to either members of the party? Um, I'll hold them out and I'll explain like the feeling I got when I was holding them and then I'll let them decide if they take it or not. Do either of you pick up either of the items? And if so, which one? I don't pick up any of the items. Okay. Edrell? I pick up the sword. Okay. Uh, you pick up the sword, look it over, you eye the gems in Cyril's hand. Um, nothing really stands out to you in your memory. Uh, it definitely does appear to be a sword of elven make. Um, not really positive, but as you eye the gems, they do look about the right size where you might be able to fit a gem in that hole in the bottom of the hilt. Uh, it's possible that you can socket a gem into the weapon. If so, you're not exactly sure what that might do. Your people in the woodland realm don't, um, don't do craftsmanship quite like this. And so while you can recognize the work of your kin, you don't necessarily know what properties it may hold. Okay. Haley, That's nothing else her. really stands out to you above that. Um, you kind of have the same idea about the gems going in the socket, but um, you don't recognize it from Bilbo's tail. I shrug and say, beats me. <laughs> sorry, sorry, old dots. Thanks for the information. <sighs> Here we go again. All right, we'll stand back. So, um, so one of the gems he got kind of a, a a bad feeling from did you say no they just all tingled okay um so he's going to take a look at the hilt of the sword and then he's going to try to size up which gem might fit in well and okay. whichever one he thinks might fit in well he'll insert into the hilt okay make a wisdom check for me uh he gets a 19. a 19. As you hold up each of the gems, you don't get any discerning difference between them as far as which one you should put into the sword. Um, but you figure, well, I've got more than one ruby, so let's put a ruby in there and just see what happens. If nothing else, I'll have more rubies left over. And you put the rest in the pouch, and holding on to the ruby alone, you still feel that sort of tingling feeling going into your finger and, and down into your wrist a little bit. Um, you, Spider -Man. you prop up the uh, hilt of the blade and you set it into there. And as you do, it, it doesn't fit quite right. You kind of give it a, a bit of a, a turn and a, and a shift. And then eventually it, um, plunk, as it falls into the hole just right as it does, the, the hilt of the blade actually seems to, that opening seems to like close in around it. Um, and you feel that same tingling energy from the handle of the blade itself, but you're not able to tell anything aside from that. Nice. I strap the sheath to my uh, waist, look at the sword, interesting. Sheath it. Oh, you, you took the sword out of the sheath? Oh yeah. Oh, oh, I missed that. Yeah. I did that when I was putting the thing in. Oh. Gotcha. In that case, something else does happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you unsheathe the blade before uh, you put the gem into it, you did notice a lot of, uh, it's, it's a, a plain silver uh, colored long sword. Um, there is beautiful um, white elven uh, filigree, uh, the length, running the length of the blade, almost like, it's a sword that would have been used uh, ritualistically. Um, but it, it has the, the heft and the balance and the sharpness of a sword for combat. And based on what Beaufry was saying, it, it was a sword used in combat. But this sword is just so beautiful, it, it could have been mistaken for just being a sword of ceremony. And mixed uh, into the, um, the filigree is an elven word, which I'm going to send to you. Right 
there because you're the only one that sees that word. And uh, I will also send to you what it means because as you hold the sword in your hand, you hear that word in your head and you have an understanding of that. So I'll send that to you in a second. I just don't want to slow what we're saying now. Uh, confused but intrigued, you put the ruby into the hilt of the blade, it closes around it. Um, you feel that same sensation kind of emanating out of the handle and the white filigree that lines the blade goes from being white to being a very deep red and you feel a heat, almost a glowing heat coming off of the blade. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, all right, I will sheath it next to my waist, and uh, Cyril feels pretty good about it, um, and he's interested to explore it in combat. Is all the right. ruby still in it when he sheaths it? Uh, the hilt has closed around the ruby for now. Yes. So is it like still warm? Yes. All right, so is the leather going to start smelling like... <laughs> it's not cooking the sheet, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's that smell, guys? <laughs> That's like on fire. Is that real? Cool. All right, awesome. I'm going to, yeah, just strap to my waist. Excited to explore more, but I don't want to hold it up, so you can keep rolling. Oh, anyway, right. I, give, I give the mithril... Um, Vest the metal code to, to Haley also. Here is a gift for you, Haley. The same way that you were thinking, I saw this in the tower and I thought of you when I picked it up. So um I'm currently wearing a leather corslet as my armor. Is that I'm assuming that's an improvement. Uh what is he giving you? Sorry, I was sending a message to you, Cyrus. Mithril armor. Uh that's a little bit of an improvement, yes. <laughs> that's a that's a massive improvement. Okay, well, like as a hobbit, am I gonna like fall over when I put it on? Uh, so it's pretty big. Um, but Edrahel, you you hand it to Haley. Haley, do you put it on right now? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, you put it on, and it's it's almost like a dress at first, in that it it goes past your waist. Um, but after a second, the mithril armor raises and shifts and shrinks and. Uh, forms to fit the wear. Oh. Okay. I wish my clothes did that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, thank you. This is really cool. I, uh, I'm probably the um, easiest. I'm not the easiest target to hit, but <laughs> I, I go down pretty quickly if I get hit. You know what I mean? So, uh, this is great. Um, I think, I think Bilbo had something like this, but I only read about it. I've only heard of it. So this is cool. Thank you. All right. So you're, you had a leather corslet before. Yeah. So that was your AC was 12 plus your dexterity, right? Mm hmm. All right. So, uh, what's your AC currently? Uh, 15. 15, it's now 18. Mithril is three higher. It has a base nice. of 15 instead of 12. Nice, upgrade. Yep. And even though I have a strength of eight, it's not like too heavy. Mithril is extremely light. It's lighter okay. than your leather armor, actually. Cool. It almost feels like you're just wearing a, a cloth shirt. The beauty of Mithril. Why well, it was so coveted for combat is it didn't weigh them down and, and it was so strong and could resist so many powerful attacks, but it didn't inhibit their movement or their ability to carry things and such. Very, very lightweight. Almost magically so. That's why they delved too greedily and too deep. All right. So, uh, you guys set out. Is there, oh, do, sorry, do you have something else? Oh, oh yeah. Before, before starting, I tell yeah. I tell Alagos. Uh, wait, I was practicing this. I forgot it now. Oh boy, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Cyril, so, uh, just so you know, you pronounce that. You word, tell him. Lutha Mayan. Lutha Mayan. Awesome. Thank you. 
Very exciting. And the, I, the I, emphasis is going to be on the I N. So it's Lutha Maya. Almost like a okay. yen at the end. Lutha Maya. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So I tell Alagos Estelionin. <laughs> nice. Um, and then and, make uh, move forward. All right. Let's go ahead and make a perception check for me, Mr. Scout. Oh, I'm the guide. Who's the scout? I'm the scout. Mrs. Scout, sorry. Wait, so did you mean to say guide or scout? I'm going to say scout. Okay. You said perception? Yes. 12. 12. Okay. Noted. Um, you don't recognize the threat. No. Um, sorry. Uh, you don't recognize exactly how far you've gone since leaving the tower. Um, you can soul with Edrahel a little bit to kind of get your bearings straight. Um, both of you continue to try and, and lead as much of a straight path to the ruins from here as you can. But it's hard here in the heart of the Mercury. At which point, um, each of you uh, start to wonder how far away are you really going to be able to make it before sundown. Um, Haley, you get a little uh, distracted. Um, Edrahel, uh, you as well. Just both of you um, wondering just how much further is it. And you hear a bit of a rustle come from the bushes just off the, 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 to the side of, of where you guys are, are going. And you hear a <clears throat> maybe 20 feet away. I heard that from there, but did that come through the Zoom call? Because I don't think I heard it on my speaker. <laughs> I think did you guys hear what she said? Oh, no. No. Oh, yeah. I heard it because it came through the bedroom door. But <laughs> do the sound again because it didn't come through your microphone. <laughs> um, uh, as you go, <laughs> uh, a familiar figure uh, peeks his head up from behind the bushes as you are now face to face with Eldakar. Oh, it's just you, dummy head. Is that my cue? Yes. Hello. Hello. Is that my cue? Is that my cue? Cinematic that moment. Cue? He goes, Is that my cue? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. That was not a beautiful cinematic moment. I don't think that happened. Hello. Eldica. I am here. Good old, my friend. You startled me. Uh, oh, thank you. I'll go. We would love to catch up with story time, but we've been standing out in these woods in the dark for a long time, and I'm ready to march. I mean, we've been walking. What have you been doing? Oh, duh. <laughs> Must have blacked out there for a moment. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm fine. Cyrell <laughs> <laughs> says, Eldakar, well met. We were concerned about you. Is what was chasing you now chasing us? I think as of right now, I've kind of lost him a little bit, but I'm hoping we're okay for now. I would like to know more <laughs> about this elusive figure sometime, but I agree with the dwarf for once. I say we continue to march. All right. The less that. information, the, the better. That's what I always say. <laughs> I right, continue to march forward. <laughs> uh, tell the car um, does let you know in his uh, searching over the previous day, you are about <laughs> half a kilometer or so from the ruins. You're about to come up on them in about five to ten minutes. Okay. I would like to... Do I... I would like to look for something super, like, unique to sort of make a note of like if i see this again then i know we're caught in a loop again okay. 
what would that be? Investigation? Probably, yeah, call it investigation. Harvest something in the tree. Unnatural 20. Okay. Uh, you don't notice any sort of enchantment in this area of the forest um, or anything obfuscating the way ahead. So while that's going on, just just while on the road, not not a huge check or like that. I'm gonna see if I can find any cool roots or something, just like a nice memento that's you know kind of something that's more gruff. I'm not looking for something pretty and shine. Looking for something that's like this is like Merkwood, so like a cool root or a cool looking so rock or something sure. like that. Yeah. Make an investigation check. Huh? All right, I got a, a unnat twenty. Nice. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> you uh, uh, go a little bit off of the beaten path, which there is no beaten path in the heart of the Mirkwood. As you kind of scope out, um, you see the odd branch here, piece of tree that, that rotted off there. Um, but uh, eventually you do actually spot um, sort of a, a withered and gnarled branch, which instead of just being brown, um, also has streaks of black running the length of it that kind of spiral around it. It's about four feet long. Um, it's about the size of my wrist in diameter. Um, and you, you give it a couple of thwacks on the ground to make sure that it doesn't just have a rotted core that's going to snap if, if you do anything with it. It appears quite sturdy. And uh, um, yeah, it's blunt. Uh, the edge of it looks like it was snapped off of part of a branch of a tree. Um, you could take some time to file it down to more of like a, either a, a flat end or even shape it into a point. Um, but uh, yeah, about four feet long, um, a little rough around the edges. You'll probably want to smooth it a little bit with some, some sandpaper or some grinding stone or something so it's easier to hold on to. But definitely screams Mirkwood when you hold on to it. All right. So I'm going to return to it. Literally, it screams Mirkwood and then it bites you. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 so with my new stick all right with my good smacking stick i want to go over to dala and say oi oh, no. i got you something little give him a little bump on the head with it and it come at you it eh, it eh, little bopping stick for you eh. and i present it to her thanks yeah. okay, you're such a flirt i know that you're a weapons master so i said oh let's find a big old stick with some blacky spirals on it and you can use it as a weapon and uh <clears throat> that's all i got for you so uh i'll see you up up in the front sometime maybe in my patrolling just you know me up in the front being the patrol guy <laughs> uh, this is awkward okay i'll see you around then <laughs> i gotta wow, shuffle to the front <laughs> That is the most chat lines I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> chat, you know, I'm going to really confidence check for chat here. You got a 15, so, you know, he's pretty, 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 pretty good. Somebody like, oh, good. So, that was good, chat. I know she's going to like that stick. <laughs> I'm glad your chat check was so successful. Um, <laughs> Dala, you now have a withered Mirkwood staff. Um, what would you like with it, what you will. Okay. Uh, is there I kind of like shuffle back. I say, you know, you can like file out the point if you want to and give it a spike. And there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's not just a stick, you know. It's more uh, anyway. <laughs> 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 He has no words. <laughs> Are there any preparations that you would like to make as you approach the ruins? I, uh, Cyril says, I would suggest our stealthier people uh, try to be stealthy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he I'm gonna like scoop up some mud on the ground. I'm gonna like <laughs> gonna coat myself in it. I'm pretty sure that was Alagos's manure. Good girl. <laughs> uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, chooses that chooses to disbelieve that statement and continues uh, to walk forward. <laughs> he just wants to block that fact out of his mind. Okay. Um, so if you guys are going to make a stealth check, go ahead and do that. Um, those of you with a horse also need to make an animal handling check for me. 
uh, Cyril's plan is kind of stay back a little bit and let the stealthy people go first. Do it, should I still make a self check though? Everyone, yeah, as a group, yeah. Okay. All right. I, I I'm at twelve, by the way. Want to know? Okay. What'd you get out the car? I got a three. Okay. Despite being a stealthy person, I got a one. Despite. <laughs> Oh, yes. Wow. What'd you get, Joel? Uh, Seventeen. Uh, Dollar, All remember your disadvantage. So you roll twice and take the lower. Cyro, what'd you get? I got a six on my stealth check. Okay. We're here, guys. Just like take out my loot. Like... Um, <laughs> Everybody, be quiet. He yells the words. <laughs> We're snitching. So, so I also need Wilhelm to make a self check, and I need both of you to make animal handling checks. Sure. Um, animal handling, I got a natural 20, and then okay. I'll do Will stealth check. I do make an animal handling check as well. Dala, what'd you get? 11. Okay. Oh, no. Is it an animal handling with advantage? No. I'm persistent in stealth. Does uh, that mean I will climb? Go ahead. Sorry, uh, Will got a 10 on his self check. And animal handling as well for uh, flavor. Well, okay. So, so it wasn't, right? Or it was? It was? No. So, oh, okay. so John, is it possible for this next moment that we're all behind a bush and our faces are all sticking through it as we're looking at the ruins? This <laughs> 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 is like that. Get a, get a three yeah. in animal handling. Uh, even like the horse's head is just like sticking through the bushes. <laughs> Uh, I want John. Will got eleven on Because we only got above a twelve in their stealth. I think the highest. What, 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 Brian, what, what the heck was your stealth? Three. Yeah. See, I, I'm the highest stealth. I'm the one with the. I'm the loudest dwarf. <laughs> well, well, guys, it went really, really well. I've really enjoyed this campaign. I'm going to miss all of your characters. What, 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 what about uh, Kona and uh, whatever the other guy's name is? One got a one, one got a two.